everybody. Today, I'm sitting down with the co-host of the Voice Over Social and Voice Artist, Leah Marks. The Voice Over Social started in 2015 and is consistently reviewed as not boring. Leah Marks and Nick Redmond mashed together interviews, investigation, and problem solving in this cheerful show for voiceover types. There's a new episode, the first of every month, and you can find out more from them at www.thevosocial.com. Leah, it's great to have Hi. you on the show. It's lovely to be here. Thanks very much. <laughs> so uh, obviously the, the name of your podcast, The Voiceover show, Social, kind of you know, entails who it's for. Um, mm -hmm. But let's go back to the beginning, 2015. Uh, you know, in the in the pre-talk here, you mentioned that it kind of started by accident or it was a podcast before you knew it was a podcast. Like, That's talk right. to us how you got started podcasting. Okay, so me and my co-host Nick, we're both voiceovers, among other things. And when we were living down in the south of England, we used to go to a little voiceover meetup group in a pub. Mm -hmm. It was in the sort of dark underground pub in the depths of Soho. And it was lovely, just other voiceovers all understanding each other's um, problems and um, like dreams and hopes and drinking together and having a nice chat. And then we both happened to move up north around the same time. And we thought we'd replicate that for the north of England, where everything mm -hmm. was a bit more disparate. London, everything is everywhere. It's all in one place, kind of, it's, it's all sure. clumped together. But up in the north is like um, like a, a, a range of cities across the, uh, the north of England that weren't really connecting and didn't mm -hmm. really have any kind of networking events of any kind. So we thought we'll do that exact same thing. We'll set up a meetup in a pub and we figured just sort of if we if we build it they will come <laughs> i heard recently that's not actually the line from the film but i don't care that's the line i'm using um, yeah. <laughs> um and so we did we started we, we called around we got we found out um who all the voiceovers were across the north of england and we invited mm -hmm. them all to the pub and um started running that every couple of months and one of the ways we were getting people to come to the pub was uh, recording two minutes of us ranting about how everyone should meet us at the pub and putting it up on SoundCloud. And so we did that for a while <laughs> and people were listening and people were showing up and it was fine. It was nice. And then we started doing kind of vox pops at the events and asking people about their, um, maybe the biggest job they'd ever done or the most ludicrous voiceover job they'd ever done. That was a oh, fun yeah. one. Uh, and putting that into the little SoundCloud upload. And then we started thinking, well, maybe we could actually bring something a bit more to this. Maybe mm -hmm. we could do like interviews perhaps and talk to people that would be interesting to voiceovers in some way. And then I was like oh my god it's a podcast wow how has this <laughs> happened <laughs> so we did we had um that's why it's called the voiceover socialist because that what it that's what it was born from was um mm. this this need to connect with other yeah. people who are working in the industry not necessarily just voiceovers actually but people who work within the audio industry mm. that connect with voiceovers in some way so whether it's engineers or producers or agents yeah. or people like that so how long yeah. was it from your meetups to your realization that you yeah, know this is a podcast it was it was more than a year maybe even more than two years it 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 it, it was it was a real slow grower i think mm -hmm. and actually there were three um i, I think there were three clear sections to okay. our podcast the first the first like era of the voiceover social was just up on soundcloud come to the pub the second era was interviewing um, well, we don't really interview other people who do the job we do. We do we interview people that are just sort of within the industry to help the people that do do the thing that we do understand better the people that don't do the thing that we do that they are connected to. That sure. was a long sentence. Um, and, <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, and then the third one, the third era was there was this tipping point where we it was episode 27 in fact and we decided we were going to go and interview a guy who is called philip banks and he's the pro a promo voiceover for one of the big um, american networks i forget which one but you'll have heard his voice it's like deep and gravelly coming up next and all that sort of thing yeah. um and he uh, lives in this little tiny village and the outskirts of, uh, of of scotland like right up on the far north of scotland mm -hmm. um on a, on a seaside village and we thought we'll go and meet up with him and and talk to him so we flew flew up there this is tremendous it was just before the pandemic in fact and so we, we wow. flew up there and we, we made this whole kind of audio diary of our trip so we're um, waking up really early in the morning mm. um we went to go and find some local people that speak um, a very strong version of the uh, scottish dialect doric and recorded them and we recorded ourselves down at the seaside and um the point of it being that that we sort of escalated things mm -hmm. to the point where it's now way out of control and every single <laughs> episode from then is like built around a concept or a or a campaign or or it's always quite it's much more produced than it ever was we're no mm -hmm. longer ever going to touch the idea of it being a podcast where we just interview a person 
and then thanks for listening please rate and subscribe and review like this is it's, it, it's gone beyond that we can never go back to that anymore like we've yeah. created this just this monster um, <laughs> and anyway, it's it's working out okay as podcasts yeah. go and i enjoy making it a lot but it's yeah. it's it's way way beyond the sure. what what i thought of as a podcast when i first mm-hmm. started so were you monetized up to that point um we i'm um, now then what we had brought in sponsors before then yes so the way we the way we have decided to do this is through sponsorship so mm. um we, we, me and me and nick we, we thought very hard very hard about all the different ways that we could possibly make money out of the podcast and we although patreon absolutely works for some people completely works um mm-hmm. i wanted to in because we say it's basically it's one big episode a month and a little little bonus episode in the middle of the month i want yeah. to be putting uh, everything into those episodes and not having to be making extra content that would um be interesting to our listeners mm-hmm. that would be beyond a paywall like that just didn't sit right with me but i think yeah. that it does work for other people especially sure. um like comedians and people like that um yeah. and uh so there's that and then i saw what was happening with um like anchor sponsorships where you can just kind of stick a sponsor or yeah. like stick a stick a little ad on on the, at the beginning or the middle of your podcast if it's on anchor or and um, there are there are other ways of i I, sh- I, I guess I should at some point say that I've made an episode called how to get a sponsor for your podcast without mm-hmm. selling your soul. So that is available <laughs> yeah. on the website where, where, <laughs> well, where we'll I go into a little that. bit more. De- oh, great. Thank you. But where yeah. we, I go into a little bit more detail there about all the different ways of um, finding a sponsor through those middlemen, uh, mm. through those other websites where they connect you up with brands. Um, but I didn't like that either because I'm a complete control freak and the idea <laughs> that somebody would come along and say okay yeah well here's a brand for you you can choose this one and then you have to be have to read the script you have to read the script exactly like this and um as a voiceover obviously i do that all the time that's how i do things i just uh, do things the way the client wants and that's okay but um for this this podcast is mine and i want to make yeah. sure that i am not just selling any old tat to yeah. my beloved listeners and so i had to kind of make some decisions about how to mm-hmm. make that work so yeah we, we contact basically we contact, should i tell you how we did it yeah uh, before I, I do have a, a comment just um we'll we'll link to your your episode about you know how you did this um mm. in the show notes but if you're listening here's a little bit a nudge to go listen to it because uh, i have listened to it and Yay. the the creativity that they put into the the whole the story of the sponsors <laughs> and the ads and they go through it and obviously being a voiceover you know artists and actors or actresses um uh, you know there's a, a little bit uh extra pizzazz you can put on it uh, <laughs> than maybe you know somebody like me could but it, it opens your eyes to like hey what could we do to stand out to a sponsor um but so go listen to that. Now she's going to tell us how she did it. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> so this is how we did it. Um, I looked at the companies that were already sponsoring in my space. So yeah. whether that was other podcasts that uh, were make, were make, were other people that were making podcasts for voiceovers mm. or whether that was voiceover conferences. And I looked through all those different brands and I looked at which ones I either used or could really like truthfully sell Mm -hmm. and say to my listeners, this is a good thing. This is a good thing by this thing. Um, And then when the biggest voiceover conference in the UK uh, started building up to like, they were selling tickets already and it was, it was coming up. I got in touch with, we, 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 we were, we, oh, sorry, hang on, I'm sitting cross-legged and my leg's gone dead. Um, <laughs> so we were already the official podcaster at that conference. And that meant that we had a really clear way in to the sponsors that were already working with the conference. Mm. And so I picked out the, the few that I wanted, the two or three that I thought they would be a good fit for us. And I offered them a massive discount on a ad space in the episode that we were making for that conference. Hmm. What I what I originally did was I offered 
approached the uh, conference organisers, um, the ad space, and said, you pay for it and give that as a bit of extra added value to the sponsors at your conference. But he wasn't into that. So instead, <laughs> I went directly to the sponsors themselves sure. and said, this is what we can offer. These are the number of listeners you can reach. Um, we're doing a mad discount sure. for this one time only. Um, you can put a sponsor ad. You can put okay. an ad in our podcast episode. So at, at that point, how many listeners... Yeah, what like were you expecting per episode? Three or four hundred. Okay, and and we'd had up until that point about ten thousand total listens. Okay, so you're gonna put them on that one episode to, um, you know, kind of highlight the conference. And you said you offered a massive discount. How'd you come up yeah. with that number of so what you were going to we, offer and then the discount? We do, um. It's 150 pounds. I don't know what that is in dollars. 150 pounds per episode for a sponsor. Okay. Um, and then we offer package deals for three and six months. Um, we also actually recently did a 12 month uh, arrangement. But um, the deal with that was that they would also get to be the exclusive sponsor for each bonus episode. And that meant that we had to definitely make a bonus episode. So <laughs> um, I don't think I'll be doing that again. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but so for the, for the discount for the uh, conference people, we said we'd do it for 50 quid. Uh, so wow. it was a third of the normal price, and mm. um, we had oh, bam, bam, my microphone. Um, we had about two or three sponsors say yes. And the idea with this was that once you have made that original, that initial connection with a sponsor mm. and showed them like what you can offer and the sort of return that they can, they'll be able to see. Mm -hmm. Then that is is then an open door to walk through and say, let's do something a bit more long term. Yeah. Awesome. So how did you track that then for them? Like, how did you make sure that they saw a return and you could go back to them and say, hey, this is what we did for you. Here's what you got. Now, that's a very interesting question because doing it this way and offering, it's, it's called a flat rate, apparently, mm -hmm. um, for, for, the, for the space in the episode, mm -hmm. uh, is different to how most sponsorship arrangements sponsorship arrangements will uh, be set up if you go through the sort of middleman websites the um the popcorn or whatever it's podcorn yeah. and all that sort of thing um because they will either do like affiliate links or they'll do um they'll give a give you a, a code a discount code which fair people have to use or um mm -hmm. uh in, in order for you to be paid a percentage of what those customers are spending yeah. um uh, or there's another way but i forgot what it is um but that is i mean you just have to have more listeners than i will ever have to make that work mm -hmm. it's, it's got to be thousands and thousands and thousands and i make a podcast for a niche audience it's, yeah. it's actually like it's it's got a finite number of people that would ever be interested <laughs> in listening to it it's not like um all the people that might one day want to have a baby or all the people that might one day decide to buy a hat like it, yeah, it's, exactly. it's, <laughs> it's it's people who are working already working in the voiceover mm -hmm. industry and maybe one day we'll branch out and be for people that use their voices a, voices for work in a bit more of a broad sense but at the moment that's what it is um mm -hmm. and so that that sort of i don't know 20p here and 20p there doesn't work for me at all so um so one of the ways we've done it uh, for sponsors is we they have they've given us a, a discount code to give to our listeners, mm -hmm. and so they'll be able to see um, how many people have taken it up. But our actual payment is sure. not uh, connected to that. Yeah. Anyway, is they pay us the money, we give out the discount code, the people use the discount code, and if then if they want to renew the sponsorship arrangement, like if they want another three months or another six months, then mm -hmm. that will maybe depend on how many people will actually pick up the uh, pick up and use the, the discount code. Uh, then there's another another thing which is um, the uh, is it, did you play the uh, the one of the witch and cat episodes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the source elements um, partnership that we have going on there that is much more about. At the moment, anyway, it's much more about uh, brand, not awareness, because everyone knows who Source Elements are, who work in the voiceover industry, but um, how people feel about that brand. Because we're mm. the biggest voiceover podcast in the UK, and we have a really lovely relationship with our listeners, and people because we're, I guess, because we're small enough to be able to con like engage with them consistently. So mm -hmm. people send us an email. We're not like outsourcing it to a, a virtual assistant to respond. Like we're responding, or if people are tweeting us, we're tweeting back, and yeah. we're able to do that because we're like around sort of between five and 900 listens per episode. If, if we go much further than that, then maybe even more difficult. Um, so yeah, so for Source Elements, it's much more been about like 
us saying, hey, friend, many, our many hundreds of friends, we like this thing. You should also like this thing. How yeah. well do you like this thing too? We all really like it. Um, I think so. It's, I don't know. There's, a, there's definitely an, an advertising marketing term for that, but I don't know what yeah, it is. Yeah, you borrow interest. And yeah. Credibility okay. and yeah. Hmm. Um, before we get too far, um, if somebody is in the United States and like, what's 150 pounds? It's 207 dollars. Uh, oh, well done. For the United States, so <laughs> I'll have to look that up. Um, yeah. Okay. So you you started monetizing through sponsorships. Now that you have more listeners, um, is your 150 pounds per episode has that gone up? No, not yet. I think because the difference between 300 to 400 and 500 to 900 listeners, I don't really think that's significant enough to adjust the price. And sure. also that was that we came at that figure, not because that's any kind of industry standard, but just because I, I, that was what I was happy to accept. You know, I thought sure. I thought I. Yeah, that's a good point. That I'm putting into this. Like, how much money do I deserve for that? Okay, yeah, well, that's, that's that's that'll do me. Yeah, that's, if... that's not changed, really you made a good point there where it's like this is what i would accept versus this is like what somebody is going to give me um mm. because i i see uh like in my own opinion like i could go through like you said podcorn or anchor or you know all these mm. weird sites that would just and put they, an ad they, on my they show they do serve a purpose they totally yeah. do serve a purpose if you've got the figures if you've got the numbers 100%. then they can actually work for you completely. yeah but then it comes at a cost to like your overall audience right because you know an ad is not the same as the show even if you do it in a, a witch and cat you know voiceover <laughs> uh comedy sketch um it's not the same as the show so you're you're kind of suffering your um, the quality of your show a little bit uh, so it's like is that worth taking maybe you know two or three dollars or four dollars or five dollars from you know an episode to me no I have a figure in my mind that I'm like this is the bottom that I'm gonna if I sell a, a sponsor like it's gonna be, have to be worth this to me because mm -hmm. it's worth that to give up a little bit of the quality um, of my show. Mm. And also, um, so the, the way I see sponsorship partnering is mm -hmm. like, I think it's like, I just think it's like dating. I just think that's what it's like. So um, you finding somebody that you think is has value in some lovely way that mm -hmm. you want to just share with the world and that you think you can work with most importantly. So um, when it comes to like companies are still people, they're still made up of people mm -hmm. and how those people operate has a big impact for me on whether I want to work with them so the sponsors that we 100%. have are really they're, they're communicative and responsive and up for being a bit creative and uh, they're appreciative of me and what I do and I mm. think that that is really important and that transfers to the money question as well because yeah 150 quid per episode is what I'm happy with but if they weren't happy with that if they didn't think they were getting value for money then that wouldn't work that wouldn't work as a relationship yeah, exactly I think yeah. Uh, yeah. So true there. So uh, I want to just jump back a little bit where you were searching for sponsors, because I know that's an another place where I see people get stuck, uh, including myself sometimes is like, who would you, I, I mean, it's overwhelming the amount of businesses <laughs> out there, you know, so if you're like, I know you said you went to podcasts and conferences and, and saw that, but could you just dive in a little bit deeper of, of your process for the search for uh, a sponsor? Hmm. Yeah. So apart from uh, looking at who was already working in the space, we were also looking at people that were providing companies that were providing services or uh, products to voiceovers. Um, and so when, uh, as an example, there's a product called Vocal Mist, which is used predominantly by singers, but they're interested in, at the moment, sort of breaking mm -hmm. into the voiceover world. And it's, a, it's sort of an inhaler, a nebulizer, they call it, okay. for um, hydrating your vocal folds. This is not an advert. I'm just saying that this yeah. exists. Um, and, uh, and when we became aware of them, and Nick actually was in contact with them first, we thought, well, actually, that is something that our listeners would really like to hear about. And as it happens, they were also interested in reaching our listeners. And so we were able to make that connection with mm -hmm. them and turn that into a three month 
um, arrangement, which is so how, to an end. how do you how do you like start that conversation? What I mean, email, I would assume. Well, it's interesting, isn't it? With that one, I think because Nick started it off because I think she was in contact with them by Instagram. She's very Instagram. Oh, okay. whereas I'm, I'm, I'm Instagrammy. Very, That's good word. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Stories, apparently, are a thing. I can't understand how to re watch them, make them, link to them. I don't, it's all completely beyond me, Instagram, but she's very good at it. So I think that's how, that's, I think that's how. Okay. I think she followed maybe them on Instagram, um, sent them a message on Instagram. But it really, like, this is the thing, it, it, it varies from, uh, from company to company. So mm. uh, for, for the ones that I've um, contacted, first of all, it's, I generally tend to pick up the phone before anything else um, sure. because. For a start, everyone's really scared of talking on the phone these days. So for somebody to call, like actually phone you, like that's going to be quite a, that's going to draw attention to you mm. as, an, as an individual um, in itself. But then also it's just a way of working out very quickly who the right person is sure. to be emailing. So rather than just emailing the info at uh, email address and just mm-hmm. hoping somebody somewhere forwards it on um, actually calling up and even if you're just talking to someone on reception, um, they could, they, they can help you so you're not wasting anyone's time essentially sure like yeah so if you're getting a reception asking them who would be you know head of uh, advertising or who you need to contact um if they might be interested in something yeah i think so and the the other thing about this is that you have to be prepared for most people just to be like uh, no don't care put the phone down like they don't care they don't care they don't care they've got a business to run you're just uh, somebody basically coming in going you don't know who i am but like would you want to give me some money um and yeah. they're gonna say no they're just gonna say no and that's how it is and i've had that so much i've been phone bashing and sending out emails and um people who just haven't been interested because I've been quite specific about who I want to partner with, um, I've maybe had slightly less uh, just outright rejections or people ignoring mm. me. People have tended to explain why, because they sort of maybe know who I am or what it is I'm doing a little sure. bit. I don't, well, I, who knows why they've been nice, but they have been nice. And uh, <laughs> but what, what you do have to remember is that most people aren't. And in fact, there was one incident where um so i had this idea and this is a free idea okay and it, actually i mentioned awesome. it in my <laughs> in my how to get a podcast sponsor without selling your soul episode but um this is for anybody who perhaps is making a podcast uh for entrepreneurs okay. um i wanted water bottles i wanted water bottles with the logo on and mm. i just didn't want to pay money for them because at that point when i first came up with this idea we weren't making any money from the podcast i just wanted water bottles it was kind sure. of maybe a way of um making a bit of cash by selling the water bottles but also it was just something that uh, would help spread the word and improve mm-hmm. connection our connection with our audience and all that sort of thing um and so i thought in the run-up to christmas people like to send out little gifts to clients um, or um, or to yeah to clients to say thanks very much for a lovely year here's to another lovely year here is a I don't know a, a pencil sharpener with my logo on it or whatever yeah. it might be a USB stick um, and so I thought that what a lovely thing to do would be to connect the really big branding companies the ones that have access to factories in China full of USB sticks mm-hmm. um, and can do them at at, at cost price um, I thought I, I thought if I said to them. You can have space in my podcast in return for water bottles. That would be a great deal for everybody because they would be getting these cost price water bottles. Uh, like I was thinking like the double, double walled aluminium fancy ones, you know, mm. not some sort of flimsy plastic rubbish. Um, yeah. And then they would also be able to reach our entrepreneurs because voiceovers are entrepreneurs are all running their own businesses, etc. cetera. Um, and they would be able to offer a discount code to all the people that listen to my podcast. And then all the people that listen to my podcast would use that discount code to buy their clients little Christmas niceness. Um, and nobody cared. Nobody cared. <laughs> <laughs> I must have spent two weeks to, like phoning and calling back and calling back and calling back. And eventually I realized that I was small fry. Mm-hmm. Totally too small for them to be even remotely interested in what I had to say. However, if there was perhaps a sort of conglomerate of um, entrepreneur podcasts that all got together and approached branding companies saying, between us, we've got 20,000 listeners um, per, per month um, and we can offer yeah. you space in all of these podcasts and all this, this, these different podcasts um, 
in in return for I don't know money I suppose um mm-hmm. then uh, then I think I think that would work I really want I, I don't want to spend another second of my life on it because I will never get back those two weeks now but <laughs> if somebody else yeah. thinks they can make it work I think it's a good deal I think it's a good deal for everybody yeah uh, it's an interesting idea um, and, I, and I definitely like the um, idea of ha- helping you know selling an ad spot for promoting you through water bottles and, and physical mm-hmm. stuff that's something that I've actually been thinking about too is like physical products um, like people talk about them I, th- I feel and that you know carry them around and they ask oh how do you like the voiceover social what what's that you know exactly, um, exactly. you know if you have your images and, and that kind of stuff on that so um, as it turns out so we're, since this is a podcast about making money we eventually did spend the money on the water bottles we've got oh, we yeah. got like um a hundred really like luxury double walled aluminium ins- or steel insulated um yeah. water bottles with our with our logo and we, i love them we've sold maybe five because water bottles are just expensive they're just expensive mm-hmm. anyway so we're selling them like uh, no, we're not making any money out of any ones that we sell we're just making the money back mm-hmm. um and uh um, yeah we sold five but w- what we're able to do is is give them away as prizes so it's it, we, we run loads of competitions because it's i mean they're just they're, they're a bunch of show-offs we've got 500 show-offs that listen to our podcast and so what, what we do we're, we're running yeah. one coming up soon which is um all about um getting your commercial demo together which is like yeah. a collection of tv or radio spots or like that are specially made for the demo and uh, and so we're doing like a, a whole workshop like uh commercial reads and people competing against each other and so we're going to be giving away like a bunch of water bottles then it's so nice to be able to do that because otherwise what what have we got we had stickers for a bit but that's not that exciting mm-hmm yeah, that's interesting. I actually listened to your latest episode before um, coming on. And so I heard about the the competition and um, mm. that's an awesome way to get your listeners involved um, with your brand mm. and, and your podcast and make them loyal listeners as well. When did that start? Like whose idea was it to put a Board competition models. together? Oh, the competition. Yeah. Well, I think um, we are making a live episode this this live episode about commercial demos online obviously um and we knew from running another live episode uh that people were prepared to pay for tickets as long as they felt that they were going to actually be able to interact and get the opportunity to either show off or just have a go you know um but if they were just listening to a mm-hmm. talk that was then going to be edited down and put on the put out as as a podcast episode, that's not something that people particularly want to pay, pay the money for online. Like in person, I think it'd be very different because then you're there for the experience and that's mm-hmm. like a party. But online is not a party. Nobody's having a party, no matter what they might be <laughs> saying about Zoom is not a party. Yeah. Um, so so for, so that's what we needed. We needed an, a real interactive mm-hmm. element to the online live episode. And so um, we worked out what that would mean. And so we're going to do like breakout rooms where people are going to be working in groups to work out how their voices, uh, what different industries their voices are suitable for. They're going to be reading scripts to each other, loads of peer related yeah. sort of peer based feedback. And then we realized that what we had is this guy who was doing a talk that didn't want to do directing, but would be happy to judge a competition. And so that's what it turned into. So workshoppy, workshoppy, niceness, and then back into the main room uh, to compete against each other and what we have to give away. Ah, what about us? Brilliant. <laughs> uh, that's so awesome. Uh, so we're getting close to the end of our time here. We'll wrap up with how um, people can find you and, and you know interact with you as well. But um, what would you say to wrap up is kind of the, the biggest thing that you and Nick have done to move your podcast forward in growth or monetization? Will you edit out this pause while I think about it? <laughs> yeah. Great. Um, so with monetization, the biggest thing that we've done is worked out how we wanted to do it and not waste any time trying to make a little bit of money here and a little bit of money there. We focused on mm-hmm. sponsorship and creating great relationships with our sponsors and making great sponsor content that people wouldn't want to just skip over and using it as an opportunity to show off our skills as voiceovers and just generally making sure that everything that we did, we meant. So mm-hmm. no inauthenticity of any kind, not saying, oh, you should use this product because... Uh, they're paying us to say that oh you should use this product in fact because actually it's brilliant and here Mm -hmm. is a funny way we're going to tell you all about it Um, (laughs) so holding on to our 
sense of truth and authenticity and all those lovely things Mm -hmm. um and at the same time uh knowing our worth in terms of sponsorship um and as far as progressing the podcast is concerned uh I actually think that that's down to always holding on to what our vision for the podcast is because uh, there are lots of people, once you start making a podcast that within a particular sector is making some sort of headway or people are aware of, people get in touch to say, hey, I'd love to be on your podcast. And 100% of the time, those people are selling something. Mm -hmm. And that might be something that you're happy to bring in. But at the same time, if your vision for your podcast is I'm going to be providing just as an example, because this is mine, I'm going to be providing really funny, entertaining, in-depth uh, programming, essentially, uh, to make the podcast that I would like to listen to as a working voiceover, then somebody who contacts you because they are also a voiceover and maybe they've got a thing that they'd like to promote, that's not Mm-hmm. valid content for that vision so as far as progressing the podcast is concerned i think it's just staying on track knowing what you want sticking to it and not just being like oh god i've got to put another podcast out this week yeah uh, let's just make it with that guy <laughs> yeah yeah no that's a good good point there and um with my science of sports recovery podcast i get that a lot where somebody has some sort of product that they want to push but um but anyways, thanks so much, Leah, for being on, on the podcast. Um, the VOsocial.com is where you can find out more about um, her podcast, what she's doing. Is there anywhere else that you want to point people, Leah? Yeah, so I mentioned I'm not very Instagrammy, but I am very Twittery. So at okay. the VO Social is our Twitter handle. Um, and if you'd like to contact me directly, then I have a website, which is leahmarks.co.uk, or I'm on Twitter as at Leah underscore et cetera. Awesome. I think that's it. Yeah. Sweet. Well, thanks, Leo, for being on. It's great having you. Great to be here. Thank you.